I wrote this book primarily for one reason. I could not believe that the police department and a judicial system that stretched up the entire East Coast could be inept enough or sinister enough to try not one but three different men for first degree murder when all of these men were completely innocent and two of them did not even know each other. In the case of Stephen Rosati, seven eyewitnesses, including one of the other accused people, placed him at the scene of the crime even though he was living 1,400 miles away at the time and didn't even know any of the people involved. The police were so powerful that they were able to manipulate whole groups of people in their quest to frame three total, totally innocent individuals. As you look at this tape, which is essentially a series of news reports that were taken as the case developed, I would like you to notice the dramatic change in Stephen's appearance from being a vibrant young man at the beginning of the trial to being a bloated, depressed, and pale prisoner at the end of the case just 15 months later as he sat in a Florida jail waiting to face the electric chair for a crime he did not commit. Is Stephen Rosati an innocent man? We take you behind ACI walls tonight for an exclusive interview. Tonight, Stephen Rosati gets ready to head back to Florida to face charges he murdered a drug dealer. Yesterday, he lost the extradition battle that stretched for 10 months now. I guess I fit the description, and they fit, they, my name came up, and uh, here I am. Rosati says he has telephone bills, personal checks, and other documents to prove he was nowhere near Florida in 1986, but working right here in Rhode Island. They know I had nothing to do with it. Um, they will have to face their time in court, but also, what's even worse, they're going to have to face God. Despite Rosati's 21 witnesses, the state called one witness to place yes. Rosati at the murder. I feel I have no other choice but to deny the petition for habeas corpus and uh, order extradition of Mr. Rosati to the state of Florida. Justice grind exceedingly fine, but they also grind exceedingly slow, so um, I don't know why it took seven months, but uh, everybody got their say in and we're pleased with the outcome. We're just going to keep fighting for what we know is the truth, is innocence. You surprised by this? Uh, no, we really weren't. We understand that it's constitutional, just went by the constitutional decision that he had to go by. Rosati's family says the charges are trumped up by a Broward County Sheriff in Florida. Time, they'll go to any length to get this case resolved in their favor. But that's not justice. If it is, it's just a Broward style, and we're concerned about it. We were told when we met uh, with, privately with Detective Wiley that my, he would fry my son in the electric chair unless he uh, went along and, and di uh, made a deal with him and he would give him seven years. This is more than shoddy police work. It's intentional fraud. The Supreme Court plans to hear the case in two weeks. Parents went to TF Green Airport to see their son off, but he was nowhere to be found. They believe plans were changed at the last minute to throw off the press. And so we came here and we found out that the uh, plans were changed and uh, he was taken somewhere else and he's out of state. We have no idea. Nearly everyone in prison will tell you they didn't commit a crime. But Stephen Rosati spent a year and a half behind bars among inmates knowing he was innocent. Rosati says he made it through the ordeal to finally see charges dropped with the help of friends and his parents. There are young people out there who have no family and are probably hurting today sitting in jail. Carl Stephen Rosati is a free man tonight. Florida prosecutors have dropped murder and robbery charges against the Cranston man who spent almost 17 months in jail while his family battled the charges. Rosati was one of three men charged with the 1986 murder of a Deerfield Beach, Florida man. Two other men were arrested this week for the murder of Joseph Facito Jr. As Newswatch 10's Jody Kennedy reports, Rosati wants to use his ordeal to help falsely accused people. I had to live with the uh, electric chair and the possibility of being convicted and sent to the electric chair for 17 months. 
for something I didn't do. From the inception, uh, there was police overzealousness on behalf of BSO, and that started a chain of events uh, that results in a, a wrong indictment. Tobin says his client will sue the Broward County Sheriff's Office, anyone in Rhode Island who deserves to be sued, including perhaps the judge and others he would not name. Rhode Island allowed Florida officials to extradite Rosati to Florida to face the charges. A Broward County Court judge dropped the charges against Rosati and the other two men after Assistant State Attorney John Aguero wrote to the court, in all likelihood, these three individuals are not responsible for the death of Joseph Facito, Jr. If you don't quit, you never lose.